friends welcome to my channel neurology videos learn by seeing today we have a class on channelopathies this topic is boring but it is very important because lot of questions lot of mcqs are asked from this uh, topic so i have tried to make it simplified and concise so the video till the end okay in channelopathy we know that what is it it is a muscle membrane excitability disorders that is in these are the disorders in which the muscle membrane become excitable we know that we have some idea about channels some channels which are present in the muscle membrane these are calcium channel sodium channel potassium channel chloride channel so we have channelopathies related to these channels okay now if see at this classification that what are these are the four channels and first is a calcium channel and related to the calcium channel we have the hypokalemic periodic paralysis okay hypokalemic in sodium we have hyperkalemic and paramyotonia congenita in potassium we have anderson toy syndrome and in chloride we have two channelopathy one is thompson another is bakers okay we will read about these channelopathies now first is very important that is hypokalemic periodic paralysis in this though the name is hypokalemic but it is a disorder of calcium channel it is of two type primary and secondary secondary means that the potassium deficiency is due to some secondary cause okay or it can be due to thyrotoxic periodic paralysis but in primary it is a primary defect in the calcium channel it is of the channel which is affected it is cal cl1 a3 remember in hypokalemic periodic paralysis it is a males which are affected more than the females it affect the adolescent group and it is never seen more than for 25 years of age if hypokalemic periodic paralysis is present more than uh, after 25 years of age you should uh, exclude thyrotoxic periodic paralysis okay and it is autosomal dominant what will be the precipitating cause this is very important patient will be a young adolescent boy who will give history of weakness which got precipitated by the rest following prolonged exercise first he had a prolonged exercise then he had rest and he took high carbohydrate diet or high sodium diet it precipitated the weakness and the weakness it lasted for 24 hours present it was present in the proximal muscles more than the distal muscles and ocular bulbar and respiratory muscles they can be involved but are rarely life threatening cardiac arrhythmias are also seen if hypokalemia is very uh, frank okay now we have the thyrotoxic periodic paralysis it is we know that thyrotoxicosis is very common in females but thyrotoxic periodic paralysis it is more common in males so you should remember that males are more commonly affected than the females and the long exercise in hypokalemic periodic paralysis if long exercise ncs nerve conduction test is done then it will show the decreasing amplitude of cmaps okay so how will you diagnose a patient first you will have a clinical scenario secondly then what you will do you will confirm it by potassium levels and sometimes potassium can be normal you get the nerve conduction test done and in nerve conduction after long exercise nerve conduction test there will be decremental in amplitude of the cmaps so what is the treatment diet patient should be a uh, cautioned about high carbohydrate diet that he should take a low carbohydrate low sodium diet and he should avoid intense exercise in treatment we have acetazolamide and dichlorphenamide Se second group is the first we had the hypokalemic periodic paralysis which was related to calcium channels now we have the sodium channel disorders in which we have two we have the hyperkalemic so, uh, periodic paralysis and paramyotonia okay in hyperkalemic periodic paralysis question is asked which channel it is the sodium channel secna 4 that scna 4 and precipitating agent is the potassium intake okay it is seen in a younger age that is first decade males are equally affected as females and proximal muscles are involved it spares the bulbar muscles the precipitating agent is the same that is the patient has rest 
following the exercise and in this it in um, hypokalemic it was a high carbohydrate diet in hypo hyperkalemic it is a fasting and emg we have the myotonic discharges and treatment we have acetazolamide dichlorophenamide or maxillotin per second channelopathy which is related to sodium channel it is the paramyotonia Paramyotonia, that is the myotonic discharges are present. Patient have the myotonia which get in which get precipitated by cold. Okay, and it worsens with exercise. This is different from the normal myotonias because normal myotonia they improve with exercise. But paramyotonia because of sodium channelopathy it worsens with exercise. Okay, CPK will be mild increase and nerve conduction study there will be the decrease in the CMAP amplitude. And you can manifest that when you are doing nerve conduction study, if you cool the muscle, the amplitude of the um, motor unit potential will decrease. And in EMG, we have myotonic potentials. And on cooling, it will be silent. And it is also, uh, remember that it is also autosomal dominant and treatment is maxillitin. Okay. Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Neurology Videos Learn by C. If you are tuning to this channel first time, subscribe the channel to get the maximum neurology videos and press the bell button to get the notification of each and every video.